Thank you. Well, I'm putting my stuff down. If you guys could all start thinking about your favorite childhood memory, that would be fantastic. It might be learning to ride a bike or riding a trike or riding in your wagon, one of those things. Um, well, it's great to be here. Uh, right now, I'm feeling it's a little bit better to be there, not quite as sunny <laughs> at the tables down there, but I'm going to do my best. Um, so at Radio Flyer, we live by something that we call the Little Red Rule. And the Little Red Rule says every time we touch people's lives, they are going to feel great about Radio Flyer. And my hope is in the next 20 minutes that I will make you feel great about Radio Flyer and hopefully maybe inspire just one idea that you could use to continue to make your new employees feel great about working at your organization. Also, in the next 20 minutes, what I'm hoping to do is to do an effective job at living out our mission. And so our mission is to bring smiles to kids of all ages and to create warm memories that last a lifetime. So during Q&A, it'll be a wagon for a question. So hopefully I can spread some smiles later on this morning. <laughs> The other thing I'm going to do while I'm up here is that I'm going to live by the flyer code. Do you want to know what the flyer code is? That's what I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> so the flyer code is our set of values, and it's what we live by at Radio Flyer. So the F is for phenomenal customer experiences. This morning, you are my customers. L is for live with integrity. Y is for yes, I can. Yes, I can do this in 20 minutes. But in the spirit of living with integrity, I need to tell you back at the office, the over, under, not one person took the under, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> the E is for excellence in everything, and R is for responsible for, for success. So the way I like to say this is that Radio Flyer is 97 years young, and we have a vision to be around for the next 100 years, and that's a really big vision. And not only do we want to be around for the next 100 years, we want to be the world's most loved children's brand. Now, we didn't say we wanted to be the biggest. We didn't say we wanted to be the best. We didn't say we wanted to be the fastest. We said we wanted to be the most loved. And the reason for that is because we know and we respect that we hold a very, very special place in people's hearts. So we want to do whatever we can now to live by our little red rule hire people that live by our flyer code so that we can be around 100 years from now spreading smiles. We believe that we can do that because of our people, our product, and our processes. And so the reason I shared all of this with you is because the processes that we've put in place and the culture that we've put in place are really the foundation and filter for everything that we do. It's the filter, it's the foundation, it's, it, it's why and how we interact with our customers, and it's the how and why we interact with our flyers who are our employees. All right, so it was really hard to get the vision, mission, and values in that opening statement. I'm just glad that I did. Um, and the reason that I, I needed to, or it was so important for me to do that, is because I've been asked to talk about orientation and assimilation this morning. And you're gonna hear throughout my talk different things that we do in our orientation and assimilation, and they're all going to come back, and they're all going to be connected with our vision, mission, and values. And for each organization, your vision, mission, and values is going to drive how you orient and welcome and bring people into your organization. So I looked up to see you know, what some words that are used to describe orientation and assimilation, and orientation is the act of orienting. That was great. And then also, <laughs> I said that it was to set, help set direction. Uh, the other thing was to provide training. And assimilation talked about absorbing information and to become part of a group. So we have always called our process orientation and assimilation because we believe that you have to do both in order to successfully bring somebody into your organization and set them up for success. So what I want to share with you is why we decided to invest time and energy and focus, particularly on orientation and assimilation. So the first reason is, is because we believe that orientation truly, 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 truly can have an impact on engagement. And you heard the statistics earlier, you saw the pie graph up there, you know, 70% aren't actively engaged. 70% aren't actively engaged. Business is really hard. Business is really challenging. We all in this room can't afford the inefficiencies and the distractions that come 
with the people that own the water cooler. I'm going to put a sign in my office that says company property on the water cooler. <laughs> Um, and so we, we can't afford that. So we look at orientation and assimilation as every new hire is an opportunity to change that statistic. Think about that. Every new hire is an opportunity to change that statistic. It's the perfect time. Motivation is high. People are committed. Hopefully we all did a really good job in the selection process. So people are matched. They're going to get to use their strengths. We all have the same goal. We want this to work out. So it's the perfect opportunity to tap into engagement. Another reason why orientation is really important to us is because we realize you only have one chance to make a first impression. Right? Right? I know that's not rocket science. <laughs> but it's really important to remember. There's some psychology there, um, but a whole lot of common sense. So when I can still hear stories about people saying, oh, I started my new job and my manager wasn't there for the day. I'm like, what? Or my manager wasn't there for the week. OK. Or I went to the office and they said, oh, you're starting today? Wow, that feels fantastic. Or worse, they say, oh, they knew I was coming. And they gave me all of these binders of information and a website. And I went into a conference room to learn more about the company. And then my niece told me a story about an orientation program where they'd go to the cafeteria and someone would come down and do like a roll call and then bring everybody off to orientation. And if someone was sitting in another part of the cafeteria and they got missed, um, no one started looking for this person. And this person didn't know who they were supposed to ask for, so in theory they could sit in the cafeteria all day. So I know that, that those things obviously to us don't feel like they're very welcoming. But yet, we make these decisions that we'll do this at work. It didn't make it even more you know, illogical. None of us would ever invite somebody over to our house for dinner and then answer the door and hand them a bunch of photo albums and say, I'd like for you to sit on my front porch and learn a lot more about me and my family. And when we're ready, we'll come back out and get you. <laughs> oh, thank you for laughing. Thank you for laughing. <laughs> because it is funny. And so we, through our orientation process, wanted to keep this very simple principle. And we wanted to tell people, we were expecting you. And we are glad that you're here. And so this is the perfect opportunity to let people know we are expecting you and we are glad that you are here. So then that brings me to the third reason why we decided to focus on orientation and assimilation. We spend a lot of energy on our selection process. We have this vision to be the world's most loved children's brand. We have this great 97 year history. There's a lot of responsibility to make sure that we help continue this brand and this gift to the world for the next 100 years. So we invest a lot of time, our managers invest a lot of time, our people invest a lot of time in the selection process. And you know, raise your hand if you like to re-recruit for positions. Raise your hand, uh, this light's so bright, I'm having trouble counting. OK, so now raise your hand if you don't want to re-recruit for a position after you found somebody that's talented. If you don't want to re-recruit after you found someone. OK, so for me, I asked myself that question several years ago because we were doing a lot of hiring. And I realized I literally felt sick to my stomach to even comprehend the fact that if we found someone, we hired them, we gave them a job offer that we might lose them even before they start or within the first month. So we made a commitment that at that moment, once we found talent, we had every intention of keeping them. You have found them, now keep them. Energy, time, resources, there is no reason to repeat it. So, so what we do is that was sort of our selling point to get everybody on board with saying it is worth the investment of time and it is worth the energy to focus on orientation and assimilation is more than just a hello when they show up at the door. So let me tell you what orientation and assimilation is to us at Radio Flyer. So we look at orientation and assimilation. It's really a 12-month experience. Uh, it's intentional actions where we are trying to accelerate the learning curve, accelerate the relationship curve, accelerate people's impact on the business curve. And when you do those things, this also accelerates their satisfaction curve. So we do all of these things through very intentional and scheduled activities, events, touch points. It's not that we have them in a classroom for 12 years and they don't walk around with a sign that says, I'm still assimilating. We don't do that. But from intellectually, we view it as until they've experienced everything once, they're still new. So until they've lived through a busy season and are like, whew, we totally rocked that, 
or until they go to the first Halloween where they're like, wow, I need to change my costume next year, everything is still new. So we look at that as 12 full months. Most of the activities are programmed in the orientation part of it, and then some very specific touch points during the assimilation to make sure that they know we're here to have dialogue with them to help them through this experience and to keep them, keep them at Radio Flyer now that we've found them. So what I want to do now is walk you through um, some of the key elements of our program and just share with you some of the things that, that we do. So welcome. So we already talked about the message that we want to send and we want to say we were expecting you. Some of the ways that we try to send this message to our new flyers is we do something that's sort of unique, and that is we look at the end of our selection process as the beginning of our assimilation process. So we're really fortunate. We're privately held. We're primarily one location. So in the very last interview, when we're very confident we're going to be extending an offer, all candidates get a chance to meet with the CWO, who's our chief wagon officer. He's the, the grandson of the founder. He's, he's the CEO of the company. And so be it 15 minutes or be it, be it an hour, he meets with each person so that after they go home and after they get an offer, they know that the chief wagon officer is expecting them at Radio Flyer. So it builds a connection, and they know that their job is important. The second thing that we do is after you know, the celebration of we got a signed offer letter, we got all the paperwork, all of that stuff is awesome and amazing, um, we also send them a welcome letter. And we send them a welcome letter, and in the welcome letter, sometimes we send, yes, a little wagon. Sometimes we send a big wagon. Sometimes we send a tricycle. Sometimes we send a scooter. And it doesn't really matter what we send, but what we're sending them is something that says, hey, we're expecting you. Don't go on that second interview with that other company. We want you to get excited about coming to work for us. Most people are just interviewing for one job. So it doesn't matter what it is, big, small, Tell them, we're expecting you. Stop thinking, stop wondering if you made the right choice because you did. So any gift, big or small, something to let them know, we're expecting you, please show up. So then we have the, the first day. You know, many people probably do similar things. You know, just make sure their desk is ready. And I'm going to spend another minute <laughs> on that. You can't work if you don't have a place to work. Um, but we do organ organizational announcements that we send out. And we add some personal fun facts into the organizational announcement. And we found that this is a really critical thing that helps people make connections early. So, for example, if I'm walking Kyle around the office and I go and introduce him to Lisa and the org announcement went out in the morning, Lisa can say to Kyle, oh, I heard you were starting today. True, she already read the org announcement. And then she can make small talk and say, hey, the Cubs fans are down in accounting. You may want to catch up with them at lunch. So Kyle's like, oh, there's Cubs fans here. Thank goodness. So he's making these informal connections already on his first day so that he then can know who to go to or at least see a face and be like, oh, yeah, that's right. That was you. And he can feel more comfortable when he's trying to do his work or his, or his business. So don't underestimate how these little things can make a big difference in people feeling welcome. So these things that we talked about in terms of welcoming bring me to this next section, which is called connecting. So Gallup asks us, do you have a best friend at work? Do you have a supervisor or somebody that cares about you? These are about relationships. So also, we intentionally put things into our process that allows people to connect and build relationships with others. Everybody goes to lunch with their supervisor. We also have everyone go to lunch with a member of the Vision, Mission, and Values Committee. Now, our Vision, Mission, and Values Committee is made up of our Little Red Rule winners. So you might remember what our Little Red Rule is. Every time we touch people's lives, they'll feel great about Radio Flyer. Voila, welcoming committee. These people are already doing this naturally. So we're setting them up, and they're going to lunch. And these individuals come from all different departments. So again, allowing them to make connections with different people. We also have a lot of committees at Radio Flyer. So we have our Smile Squad, which is our social responsibility group. We have our Eco Flyers. We have our Wellness Committee. And a lot of the leaders of these groups are employees who have future leadership potential. So we also ask each of them to take between five and 20 minutes, depending on their schedules, to meet with each new flyer, either one-on-one -on -one or in a group, and tell them about the committee. Again, educating them more about Radio Flyer, but giving them connections in and out of their department. We also make sure that we're connecting them with the human resources team, so we have intentional um, touch points with them that feel more than just paperwork. Um, and then we do something that I think is really key and important. We do a 10-week check-in. 
And the 10-week check-in is with Human Resources, and we actually send them a series of questions ahead of time. So we're asking them about feedback on our selection process. So they've been there 10 weeks, so they know that the job offer is going to stick. So now they're more honest with us about what we could have done differently while trying to recruit them into the organization. We also ask them, while it's still fresh in their mind, what could have we done differently during these first 10 weeks of employment to help you? And then what it does is opens up the dialogue of what barriers can I remove for you now going forward? What else do you need from me? Which is the most important thing in this whole process is making sure that you're building these touch points to build the dialogue back and forth. Then um, after you know, the human resources thing, one other thing that we program is we want to connect people to our brand and we want to connect people to our products. So people do product assembly, they have to build a wagon, they have to build a rocking horse, again, with multiple departments. And then also we send them to the retail stores with a group of people to see our products in action on the shelf. So all of these things are connecting them to people and to the brand, to our products. And then we also want to connect them to our goals. And so what we do on their first day is we have five company goals, everyone gets the five company goals. Everyone gets the department goals, and everyone gets five individual goals. Before we'll even start recruiting for a position, we need a job description, but we also say, what's the deliverables? How is this person going to be measured? So on their very first day, we give it to them. Now, some people might be like, wow, that's a lot of information. That could be overwhelming. I promise you, I have never, ever had one new employee look at me and say, I'm so overwhelmed by knowing what's expected from me. It just doesn't happen. What they usually say is, wow, in my last job, I didn't even have goals. <laughs> or what they say is, wow, I'm so overwhelmed with how helpful people are. That's what you want them to be overwhelmed by. So we give them their goals so that they're really clear about what's expected from them. We also give them a copy of the performance appraisal, which includes our values. And so we went through the flyer code. And we give them specific definitions so they would understand what living with integrity means. What does it mean at Radio Flyer? It's different than just being honest and sincere. It means following through on your commitments so that they, again, know what is expected from them. After we go through all of these expectations and giving them tools for them to reference, we want to make sure that we're giving them the knowledge to set them up to be successful. So all new flyers are accepted to Wagon University on their first day. So they didn't know they were going back to school. And then I also tell them the good news of you never graduate because you're a lifelong learner now. Yes, HR folks, please laugh with me. <laughs> so they join Wagon University, and we have a 10-course um, series called our New Flyer Series. And the unique thing is that our leaders are the teachers. So all of our senior officers teach a course in this series. They commit between two and four classroom hours per year. This is doable, regardless of the size of your organization, with video technology and the amount of commitment that's required after you set it up. And so what our leaders are teaching, are teaching them important things about our business that helps accelerate their performance and helps accelerate their engagement in our business. The first course is Breakfast with the Chief Wagon Officer. He walks through the family history, he walks through his history, he walks through his expectations, and then he also shares his goof-ups and what he's learned so that people are starting with a frame of reference of knowing where he's been. Another course is um, Wagon U 162 Know the Product, so our SVP of Product Development. One section is the anatomy of a wagon. Yes, a wagon has anatomy. So again, they're connecting with our senior leaders, learning about our business to set them up to do great in their job. And then the last course is called Build Your Best Career at Radio Flyer. So we make it no secret, we want you to stay. We want you to stay. Welcome, let's teach you everything. And by the way, once you're feeling great about what you're doing, we want you to stay. And when we put all these things together, and we've been asked, you know, do you think this works? And I, I have a very solid yes, I believe that this works. After all of that investment in selection, and I look back over the past three years, we have over 90% retention of our new flyers. Um, we asked them all, did you feel welcomed on your first day? It's 100%. Did you feel like you were given enough knowledge and training to do your job? That went from 80% to 100%. And then all in all, are you satisfied with your decision to come to Radio Flyer? It's 100%. We did an employee engagement survey back in January, and 98% of our flyers say that all in all, they are satisfied with Radio Flyer. So we do believe that by focusing on the welcome, the connecting, the setting expectations, and providing knowledge, that this, in fact, does help set yourself up to be a more highly engaged, productive workforce. So the one message I want to leave with you today is after you find them, just keep them. Thank you. <laughs>